Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Avery and today I'm going to be telling y'all all about all the books that I read in December. <laughs> So in total, in December, I read 18 books. <laughs> I read a lot of physical books this month. I read five. I used to read zero physical books. <laughs> I read five physical books, five ebooks, and eight audiobooks. So without further ado, I'm going to be talking about these books from my least favorite to my favorite. So let's get started. My least favorite read of the month was Chase Me by A.D. Award. I gave this book one star. <laughs> I believe I read this on my ebook. Maybe it was a Kindle Unlimited read. I honestly don't remember. I've kind of put it out of my mind. All I know is that it is like a curvy romance series so I believe each woman in this series is plus size so that was a great diverse read. That's why I wanted to read it, it was because I wanted to read more books that had curvy women in it. It was not good <laughs> unfortunately. Um, this is a dragon shifter romance also so basically this is around a main character named Cecily who is a wedding planner and one day she just gets kidnapped by this dragon shifter named Jacob. Jacob steals her because he thinks that she has stolen some old dragon relic or something like that. That's the most I give you for the summary. I don't remember a lot of it. The parts that I do remember, very negative. The magic system in this story, not great. Apparently Cecily has secret powers that she never knew that she had until she meets this dragon and apparently she lets all of her emotions out and the reason why she has not had powers in her previous time in her life is because she's always kept her emotions in check which when she meets this dragon all of a sudden all, all of her emotions are released and she can now do magic which she never knew that she could do is very weird i found it to be very underdeveloped in the magic aspect and overall I just didn't like these characters either very tropey and very boring insta lovey even though it says it's hate to love it's not really it's not informative whatsoever into the magic system into the world like very confused don't remember anything other than the things i just said next i have how to catch a wild viscount by tessa dare this is i believe tessa dare's first ever published work it's very short maybe only 70 something pages unfortunately this was not my favorite. Um, Tessa Dare has really grown in her writing, I can see. So this is about our two main characters, Luke and Cecily. This is a historical romance. These four characters are set to go to this creepy mansion to basically tell ghost stories to each other and help one of the characters write a novel, a scary novel or gothic novel. Two of the characters are Cecily and Luke. Before Luke went off to war, he kissed Cecily which was Cecily's first kiss, and basically insinuated that he really liked her, but unfortunately he went off to war before he could do anything, or so Cecily thought. So for four years, she's been waiting for him. She's gotten countless and countless of marriage proposals, but she uh, has not acted on them because she's been waiting for Luke. And Luke gets back and acts like a total piece of dirt. Isn't nice to her, not welcoming whatsoever, does not give her any promise that they're actually going to get married. And then for some reason, this whole subplot about Cecily trying to find a deer shapeshifter in the forest and it's her trying to find a deer man in the forest or something like that. A very very strange. It was just a, it was just all over the place for a very very short book. I just didn't see the connection between the characters unfortunately so I ended up giving this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars. Next I have The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. So I have been meaning to get more into young adult fantasy because I love young adult fantasy. Look at all this young adult fantasy behind me. I have loved young adult fantasy. This year I have not read a lot of it because I've been getting more into romance which I don't want to only be a romance reader. I want to read a lot of things. Um, so I decided to pick this one up because it has been on my TBR shelf for so long and it was available on Libby to borrow so I picked it up. So this is about our main character named Shahrazad. In this land the caliph or the king of the land takes a new bride every single night and in the morning she ends up dead. Shahrazad's best friend is one of those people so Shahrazad volunteers to become a wife to avenge her best friend's death. And so it is kind of like a relationship between the caliph and Shahrazad because Shahrazad then becomes the first woman to ever survive one night being there. So it's their relationship. It was very, very, very 
flowery. The writing style was a lot for me. Maybe it would have been better if I physically read this book, but I listened to it. I was very confused through a lot of this. I had to go back and listen to some things because I didn't understand what happened. There's like some terminology in here that I don't know about that are specific to a certain culture, which I don't I don't know anything about it. Um, I'd love to learn about it. I believe there was an index in the book as to what so certain terms meant, but that was not in the audiobook. So maybe if they put that in the audiobook, it would have been better. There's a love triangle kind of in this, which I despise love triangles. Um, I've only ever read one book where a love triangle went well for me. There's like obviously a romance between like Shahrazad and the and the caliph of the king. It just goes from like complete 180 of Shahrazad hating him to her having feelings for him. I didn't get why. We didn't get like why do you have feelings for him? Where did these feelings come from? I was very confused. Didn't really like some points in this. I gave this book 2.5 out of five stars. I honestly have no idea if I would ever continue on with the series. I have the second book physically on my physical TBR. I don't know if I'm gonna continue though. Next I have The Guppy Prince by C.W. Gray. This is the first book in the Silver Isles series and this is a book I read through Kindle Unlimited. So this is about a main character named Dover who is a guppy-tailed merman and the youngest prince of the Southern Isles. And in this world that he lives in it's basically a fictional world based on our world where everyone knows that shifters, mermaids, vampires, everyone knows that if those things exist like they all live knowing that the other exists with humans. They don't necessarily live together in harmony but they know that they exist. Um, so then Dover, the merman, hears the mating call to a human named Ben. It's their relationship so this is an LGBTQ plus romance. People are gonna hate it. People are gonna hate this book so I don't necessarily recommend it. It is very insta-lovey. Steamy scenes are not that great, not that well written. The characters, there are way too many to keep track of. I don't, I could not keep track of these characters. I only knew of Ben and Dover and that was it. And they were like over 20 characters that you learn about and mainly interested in it because of the idea of the book, the idea of a merman getting with a human and then being mates. I loved the idea of it. <laughs> That's why I'm, I'm I'm probably going to pick up the next book in the series because I'm very interested because I believe it's with a shark shifter and a merman. Um, so that sounds interesting. I believe the series is going to be very, very, very insta-lovey. This book was very insta-lovey. People are going to hate this book. I don't recommend this book. I'm just in it for the idea of a mermaid story because <laughs> I love mermaids, but I didn't necessarily love this book because I did not. Um, I ended up giving this book a 2.5 to a 3 star. Next we have the two Ruby Dixon books that I read in the month of December. First we have Kelly's Catastrophe which is book number nine in the Ice Home series which is a spin-off of the Ice Planet Barbarians which is basically alien smut, alien romance books. This one is about our main characters Kelly and Matok. I gave this one three out of five stars. It is not my favorite in this series at all. It has a hate to love aspect but the hate to love is mainly sparked by miscommunication throughout the whole book and why they don't like each other is based off of a huge miscommunication that they don't talk about. I didn't like that. There's also kind of like a drugging in this, which I didn't feel like was necessary. Like Ruby Dixon talked about this, I believe on a post or something where she said she messed up. She shouldn't have put that in a book, but uh, she did, she, she, like she can't go back and undo it. I did enjoy just the world. I love the world. So gave this one three stars. Next, I read the next book in the Ice Home series, book number 10, which is Penny's Protector. This one is about Penny and Sabren. I gave this one four stars. I loved this one way more than Kelly's Catastrophe. So this is a very sweet romance. So Sabren is an alien and he basically has this really big crush on Penny. I love Penny. She is a plus size woman. She is not afraid to show off her body. I love her and she's wonderful. I also really love this book because my favorite couple from the Ice Planet Barbarian series comes up in this book. So I really loved how they're going to be a part of the Ice Home series now. I also read this one during the Kendall Unlimited weekend readathon, by the way. So if you want to know more thoughts about this book, go check out the vlog that is linked down below. Next we have Watch Over Me by Mila Gray. This was probably my most anticipated read of 2019 and sadly I am a little disappointed. This is kind of like the fourth book in her companion romance series. I didn't 
really like this one unfortunately or didn't really love it so this is about our two main characters zoe and tristan zoe is on the run with her family to basically hide from their her abusive father who has been released from prison early. Tristan is Zoe's brother's best friend uh, who is in the Coast Guard and he basically helps her family. So it's a relationship between Zoe and Tristan. This book uh, jumped around a lot. Um, there were also certain aspects in the book that I didn't feel like were needed, which I can't talk about because they're spoilers, but they're just certain things that I didn't feel like added to the story that didn't really need to be a part of the book. I did really enjoy Zoe and Tristan as a couple in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, like, as I said, it jumps around a lot. All of a sudden it gets like said like, oh, two weeks in the future, they're now a couple, which how did that happen? Like I wanted to be shown what happened in their relationship instead of told what happened in their relationship and unfortunately that happened a lot where we were told a lot of things instead of shown them in the aspect of Zoe and Tristan's relationship. Also communication in this book was a really big problem so Zoe has two younger siblings. The three of them live with their mother. Zoe and their mother basically co-parent kind of. They don't tell the younger siblings that their dad is released from prison. They don't even punish these kids when they've been doing really crappy things and being dishonest. They obviously love these kids, but like the choices they make in parenting them wasn't the greatest, unfortunately. They just didn't tell them anything that was going on, even though they're old enough. One of the kids is 14 years old. She can know if her father has escaped from prison. A thing that I did love in this book was the fact that we got to see the characters from the previous uh, books, books one and two. We don't get to see any characters in books, in book number three, Book number three is a very random book in the series. I do really love how we got to see Jessa and Dee Dee and their romantic partners. This book was just very all over the place for me. Unfortunately, it did not live up to my expectations, but I will read anything that Mila Gray writes, okay? I will pick up another one of her books for sure. Unfortunately, this one just didn't work that well for me in my tastes. Next, I have another book that I read during the Kindle Unlimited Weekend Readathon. We have Billionaire for Christmas by Laurie Baxter. This is a very short 50 page Christmas novella all about this woman named Ivy who has a huge crush on her boss but uh, she's never gonna tell him or act on it because it's her boss and she could get fired. So it's her going to this company Christmas party that he's hosting. Turns out that the boss also has a crush on Ivy. He decides to tell her about his feelings during this party and act on his feelings at this party. I give this book 3.5 out of five stars. I wish there was more steam to it. There was no steam to it at all. Very, very short. If this was a long book, like a longer book, maybe add like 50 more pages or more of a story, I would have loved it this book. If you want a cute Christmas novella, here you go. Next I have The Chaos of Standing Still by Jessica Brody. I ended up borrowing this audiobook through Libby but I do have a physical copy. I really do recommend the audiobook if you want to read this book. It takes place on New Year's Eve. It spans the whole day. This book is only one day. I really liked that. I've never read a book set during New Year's. I love New Year's, one of my favorite times of the year, so I love that part of it. So this is about our main character named Ren. It's been almost a year since she has lost her best friend in a car accident. She has this one text message on her phone that has not been opened for a whole year. It is the last text message that her best friend sent to her before she died and she refuses to open it. And so she ends up getting stuck in the Denver airport during a snowstorm and she ends up bumping into a guy and uh, dropping her cell phone and picking it up and walking away. But little does she know that the cell phone she picked up is not hers, it is the guy's cell phone. They ended up accidentally switching cell phones. And she is freaking out because she does not want this person to open the text message. Like she thinks her life is going to be over if he opens a text message. This book deals a lot with grief. I really liked how that was touched upon in this book. We also deal with Rin and her anxiety and her and her therapy sessions and I loved that part of the book. The reason why I could not give this a five star, I gave this four stars, is just because I found it to be a little bit too bizarre to me. Very unrealistic and some things that happen in this book. A relationship between her and the guy in this book was a little bit too fast. It happened in one day. Other than those aspects, I really did enjoy my time reading this. And please listen to the audiobook if you haven't. It's wonderful. The next book that I have is Monstrous Volume 1 by Majori Liu and Sana Takenda. This was my last read of 2019 and I'm so happy that this was my last read because it was so stinking good. So this is a steampunk Asian inspired fantasy 
graphic novel. That's all I can say about the premise. Like, I don't really know how to describe this book. It's very strange and I can't really put into words about what happens in this book or what this book is about. It's just magical and also creepy and gory and um, interesting. <laughs> this graphic novel was really great but I cannot give it five stars. I ended up giving it four stars because I was confused through a lot of it unfortunately. It may just be me and I may be really dumb I don't know, but uh, I was confused through a lot of it. Um, I think I'm going to have to go online and figure out like and read like an actual plot summary chapter by chapter of what happens. There were just certain terms and certain things that I found confusing, but I was really intrigued and I found myself flying through it. I really did enjoy it. I really want to continue on with the series, so I do recommend this graphic novel. Next we have another graphic novel. We have Pumpkinheads by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks. I loved this one. I ended up giving this one four stars though just because it wasn't like the perfect book. I wouldn't think that this is one of my favorite books of all time if you know what I mean. So this graphic novel is about our two main characters Deja and Josiah and they have been working at this autumn pumpkin patch fair for years but this is the last time they're gonna be at the fair because they're going to go off to college and not work there anymore. Um, so this is the last night at the pumpkin patch. Josiah has always had a crush on this girl at the fair. He's never acted upon it so Deja helps him go on a journey in the patch in the fair to try and find this girl and to tell her how he really feels and it's them trying a bunch of snacks, going on a bunch of rides, exploring the fair. I found it so cute. This is definitely going to be a read that I will read every fall season. I love this and I hope that y'all do too. Next for our Black Dagger Brotherhood books. <laughs> the Black Dagger Brotherhood is a paranormal romance series dealing with vampires and vampires have their own secret society in the world. I love this series and read some of my favorites in the series this month so here are four of them. I read The Beast by J.R. Ward book number 14. I listened to this one through Libby and gave this one five stars. I'm not going to be going into the summaries for these books all that much because they are later books in a series. Then I read The Chosen by J.R. Ward, number 15 in the series. I also listened to this one through Libby. I ended up giving this one 4.5 out of 5 stars just because this was probably my most anticipated book in the entire series and uh, kind of let me down. It wasn't like all that I thought it was going to be. Couldn't give it that five stars, unfortunately. The next two are actually part of the spinoff series called Black Dagger Legacy. So I have Blood Vow by J.R. Ward. Um, I gave this one five stars. This is a uh, romance between a guy who's in the Black Dagger training program to become a soldier and he becomes the bodyguard to a vampire aristocrat. And it is a their romance, so is a bodyguard romance, which I personally love that trope, so I really loved this one. And the last J.R. Ward book I have to talk about today is Blood Fury, which I also gave five stars. This is a romance between two of the recruits in the Black Dagger training program. So they're both like warriors and uh, they both kick butt and I love them. This is also, also the woman in this relationship is also bisexual. So you got that bisexual representation there. And there's also another couple in this book. The other couple is probably one of my new favorite couples in the entire series it is a male-male relationship. I love them a lot. One of the guys in this couple like has always like been unlucky in love and he finally finds his true love in this book which I loved. <laughs> so I really 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 enjoyed this one. Probably my favorite in the spin-off series. Next I have Well Met by Jen DeLuca. This was our lovely ladies pick for November and December. Our live show will be linked down below. We already talked about this book, discussed this book. So this is a romance book all taking place during a renaissance fair. So these two main characters, Emily and Simon, really don't like each other. Um, Emily does not like Simon because he basically has a stick up his ass, doesn't really have all that much fun, and is very serious about his job and just likes to criticize Emily a lot. So these two characters don't like each other, but their characters in the Ren Fair end up having a relationship. Them trying to deal with them not liking each other, but then also their characters liking each other. I loved this so much. One of the main reasons is because of the Ren Fair aspect. If I had to critique this book a little bit, it would be that I wanted more Ren Fair in here. We only see a little bit of the Ren Fair in this book, which I wanted to see the whole Ren Fair. <laughs> I mainly love this book because of our main character, Emily. She catastrophizes so much, which is something that I do. And it's never explicitly stated that she has anxiety of any sort, but I just really connected in the way that she likes to 
catastrophize and think the worst of things because I do that very, very, very often. Also, I just loved Emily and Simon's romance. It was great. I loved it. I cannot wait for the next book to come out. Next, I have Eleanor and Grey by Brittany C. Cherry. This was a book that I read during the Kindle Unlimited Weekend Readathon. I listened to this through Audible Escape. This is about our two main characters, Eleanor and Grey, and they were kind of a thing back in high school, but Eleanor ends up moving away from her hometown. I believe this takes place maybe 15 years later. Uh, she ends up getting the nannying position for his children. Like she becomes the nanny to his 14 and six year old and it's them sparking up their romance again, but it's also way deeper than that because Gray has to deal with the loss of his wife who has passed away recently. It talks a lot about grief. Brittany C. Cherry really hits you in the feels with emotional books. This was a very emotional book. Uh, this is about second chance love. This is also about dealing with a uh, family, coming into a family that is not, not necessarily biologically yours, just a romance between two people that have been broken in the past and that come together. I loved this a lot. The last book on this list and my favorite book that I read in December is Full Tilt by Emma Scott. So this is about our main character named Casey who is in a rock band. She has a little bit of a drinking problem. She is about to hit rock bottom in her life. Our other main character is Jonah and he ends up being the limo driver for Casey's band one night. Casey ends up in the limo by herself, passed out, drunk, wasted. And so Jonah drives her home, but her place is locked. She doesn't have any keys on her and he has nowhere to bring her except on his couch in his apartment. So he takes her to his apartment to sleep on his couch and it's their romance starting from there. Jonah actually has a heart condition. This book really hit me hard. If you want an emotional book, pick this one up. But if you also just want a book about characters that really connect and kind of basically become friends to lovers. They become friends first. I really recommend this book. I love this book. One of my gonna be my favorites of all time. I already ordered myself a physical copy to put to my collection. I love it and hopefully y'all do too. It is wonderful. Anyways, there you have it. Those were all 18 books that I read in the month of December. Sorry for this very, very, very long video. Anyways, thank y'all so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in the next one. Bye. Thank you.